Arthur No Fee Fitness here. Let's talk about creatine. Creatine is a small substance your body makes from three normal protein building blocks. Your liver and kidneys put these blocks together and turn out about one gram of creatine every day without you noticing. If you eat foods like beef or fish, you usually get another gram because those meats already contain creatine. Almost all of the creatine you have, about 95%, ends up inside your skeletal muscles, the muscles that move your bones. A tiny share sits in the brain and the heart. Inside each muscle fiber, creatine quickly picks up a phosphate group and becomes phosphocreatine. Think of phosphocreatine as a ready to use energy charge. When you lift a heavy weight or start a full sprint, your muscles burn through their stored energy molecule, ATP, in a few seconds. Phosphocreatine donates its phosphate so the muscle can rebuild ATP on the spot and keep working at top power for a little longer. The larger this phosphocreatine pool is, the longer you can stay at maximum effort or the faster you can recover between hard sets. Vegetarians and vegans begin with lower creatine in their muscles because they do not eat meat or fish. When they take a daily creatine supplement, about five grams of creatine monohydrate mixed in water, their muscle stores climb by as much as 40%. People who already eat meat still gain, but usually only 10 to 20% because their muscles were closer to full in the first place. A small group shows almost no change. Researchers call them non-responders. They already have near full stores, so extra creatine has nowhere to go. Taking five grams once a day is enough to fill the muscles in about four weeks. Some athletes want faster results and use a loading phase of 20 grams per day split into smaller doses for a week, then drop to five grams daily. Both plans end at the same point. Loading just gets there sooner. The plain creatine powder sold as monohydrate is still the form used in almost every study because it is cheap, mixes easily, and consistently raises is muscle creatine when people take it every day. When a muscle fires at full speed, it empties its stored ATP almost at once. In those first seconds, phosphocreatine steps in, handing over its phosphate so ATP snaps back into service and the contraction can keep going. The exchange is lightning fast and needs no oxygen, which is why it covers efforts such as the start of a 100 meter dash or the opening push of a heavy bench press. The snag is that a muscle holds only a few seconds worth of phosphocreatine. As soon as the pool runs low, power falls and you either slow down or rack the bar. Raising the size of that pool is exactly what daily creatine does. Magnetic resonance studies show that five grams of creatine monohydrate each day for four weeks lifts total muscle creatine by 10 to 20% in meat eaters and by as much as 40% in people who avoid animal protein. With more phosphocreatine on hand, the muscle can hold top speed a little longer and rebuild ATP faster between sets. So total work performed in a session climbs without changing the workout plan. Researchers check whether this extra work translates into real world progress by running controlled training blocks. Meta-analyses collected by the International Society of Sports Nutrition confirm the pattern. Compared with the same training and the same diet but no supplement, Creatine raises one rep max strength, improves how many explosive sprints an athlete can repeat, and adds lean body mass over eight to 12 weeks. The average strength edge lands between eight and 14%. These numbers are not magic. They come from doing more productive repetitions and recovering sooner rather than from any stimulant effect. Lifters report that a weight they could press six times now goes for eight or nine, or that they hit the next set fresh after a shorter rest. Over months, that extra work turns into thicker fibers and higher force. Most people reach full muscle stores by swallowing one teaspoon, about five grams, of plain creatine monohydrate in water every day. Some athletes who need results within a week use a loading phase of 20 grams a day split into four small drinks. That brings stores to the same ceiling in five or six days, and then they drift back to the usual five grams. Either method works as long as the small daily dose continues. Tablets, flavored mixes, and newer chemical forms exist, but head-to-head -head tests still show that simple monohydrate powder performs just as well for less money and with the same absorption. Beyond muscle and power sport, interest has shifted toward the brain. Neurons also burn ATP at high speed, especially when oxygen or glucose is short, and they hold a modest pool of phosphocreatine to bridge brief gaps. A 2024 systematic review found that regular creatine can sharpen working memory, reaction speed, and attention when the brain is under stress. For example, after nights of short sleep or during complex tasks at altitude. News reports in early 2025 highlighted pilot trials in older adults and people recovering from concussion. Early results are encouraging but still small and regulators note that evidence in healthy young volunteers remains mixed. The take home message is simple. The brain does use extra creatine when it is low on energy, but the strongest proof so far belongs to muscles. Safety has been tracked for more than 30 years because creatine in the blood slowly breaks down into creatinine. Doctors once worried that supplements might harm the kidneys. 
Large reviews up to 2025 settle the question. Daily doses between three and 10 grams for periods as long as five years do not impair filtration or raise markers of kidney stress in healthy adults. Blood tests may show a slight bump in creatinine, but that reflects conversion from the extra creatine, not damage. Reported side effects are mild and uncommon. About one person in 10 notices mild stomach upset if they swallow a large dose at once. Dividing the powder into two smaller servings helpful fixes it for most. A quick increase in body weight, usually one to two kilograms, comes from water moving into the muscle cell, a normal osmotic shift that levels off after the first couple of weeks and later supports protein buildup. People often ask when to take creatine, how long to stay on it, and whether it loses effect with time. The muscles do not care what hour you swallow the powder, only that the same amount reaches them every day. Researchers who compared morning, midday, and evening intake saw no meaningful difference in how much phosphocreatine the fibers stored or how well athletes later performed. What does matter is consistency. Skip several days in a row and the extra reserve slowly drains away through normal urine loss. Most of that loss happens in the first four weeks after stopping, so strength and sprint capacity gradually settle back to baseline if the supplement is not restarted. Some coaches still tell lifters to cycle creatine for a month on and a month off to avoid adaptation. Modern data do not support that idea. Muscle transporters stay responsive for at least five years of continuous use, and strength gains keep pace with training volume, not with the calendar. For young adults, the practical strategy is simple. Five grams every day mixed in any non-acidic drink all year round. Age and sex do not block the benefits. Men and women over 60 who began resistance training while taking five grams of creatine added more lean mass and lost more fat than control groups who trained without it. The difference averaged one to one and a half kilograms of extra muscle in 12 months, enough to raise chair stand speed and walking power. The same trials reported no rise in blood pressure or kidney markers. Teenagers show the same muscle response and sports medicine groups now state that creatine is safe for healthy athletes from 16 upward as long as a qualified coach supervises dosing. Younger children are rarely studied, so pediatric use still waits for clearer evidence. Another point concerns how creatine mixes with other common nutrients. Taking it in the same shake as carbohydrate raises insulin a little and speeds entry into muscle, but the long-term store ends up the same either way, so extra sugar is optional. Pairing creatine with beta-alanine, a compound that buffers acid in the muscle, produces small additional improvements in repeated sprint work because the two substances support different energy limits. Caffeine does not cancel the benefit. Both can sit in the same pre-workout drink without interfering with each other's absorption, though people prone to stomach upset often separate them by an hour to stay comfortable. Hydration sometimes worries new users because the early weight gain comes from water moving inside the fibers. That shift does not dehydrate the body as a whole, but drinking at least two liters of water per day remains wise, especially during hot weather sessions. Blood tests performed in military personnel who combined creatine, summer field drills, and heavy packs showed normal sodium and kidney values as long as simple fluid targets were met. Several myths linger online. One claims that creatine raises hair loss risk by boosting a hormone called DHT. The story began with a small 2009 study in college rugby players who displayed a slight uptick in DHT after a loading phase. Larger trials published in 2023 and 2024 failed to repeat that finding, and dermatology reviews now conclude that everyday 5-gram dosing does not alter hormone balance enough to affect male pattern hair loss. Another myth warns of muscle cramps. Controlled hydration studies on football players found fewer, not more, cramps in those taking creatine because the extra intracellular water helped maintain fluid balance during long practices. For athletes concerned about doping rules, creatine remains fully legal and is not on any world anti-doping agency list. Testing laboratories do not measure it because the substance is identical to what the body already produces. Power to weight sports sometimes question whether the early kilogram of water will hurt relative strength, yet platform records show that the larger phosphocreatine pool usually lets an athlete lift or sprint past that small added mass within weeks, turning the net effect positive. Thoughtful, finally researchers are exploring medical fields excited beyond sport. 
Neurologists running trials with patients recovering from concussion or mild traumatic brain injury report that five grams per day lowers the mental fog scores recorded in neurocognitive tests and shortens time to full exercise clearance. Psychiatrists studying treatment resistant depression have added the same daily dose to standard medication and observed faster mood improvement, especially in women. These studies remain early, but they point toward a broader role for creatine as an energy buffer in cells that struggle when stress outruns ATP production. <clears throat> Everything we know so far lines up behind a single practical message. A small scoop of plain creatine monohydrate taken every day raises the muscle's emergency energy store, lets you perform more hard reps or longer sprints, speeds day-to-day -day recovery, and stays safe for healthy kidneys, hearts, and brains across the entire adult lifespan. Keep training hard, keep nutrition steady, and let that extra reserve do its quiet work inside the fibers.